and uh, today we will start with rcc work okay we will start with in today's class we will start with rcc work proposition so you can see on the screen the rcc work uh, is of uh, 1 is to 2 is to 4 proportion okay it is of 1 is to 2 is to 4 that will be given to you or that will be uh, set by you whatever proportion you are using as per that proportion you have to write down you have to write down your uh, you have to write down your specifications okay so coming to materials as i have told you the first thing that you have to write in specification is regarding materials so we will write regarding the reinforcement that right? regarding the cement concrete and all those things is uh, Uh, the same thing which you have used in cement concrete right the same thing is continued the new thing here is the introduction of reinforcement so reinforcement either you can go for mild steel you can go for deformed steel and you have many other types of steel right you have many other types of steels so mild steel deformed steel hyd bars right tmt bars that is thermo mechanically treated bars many other types of bars are available depending upon your design or depending upon what you are going to use uh, on that you have to write the particular specification so let me show you a few uh, types of uh, rebars which are available in the market right you can see reinforcement uh, styles so uh, you have deformed bars you have mild steel bars you have ribbed bars these are called as ribbed bars right you have ribs on them so various patterns of ribs are also present right you can see this has very different kind kind of ribs this has also different kind of ribs and these uh, bar has indentations okay this bar has indentations on it so this is a twisted bars you can see twisted bars and this is a tendon okay tendon so various types of reinforcements are there depending upon that uh, you depending upon uh, your uh, design you can uh, you can write the specification uh, you have uh, different types and uh, different kinds of bars okay so the next thing is uh, important is bars should be round okay they should be round they should not be circular in uh, they should not be uh, rectangular or square in cross section they should be round in cross section okay and the hooks uh, hooks and bent and bent accurately the as per your uh, schedule they have to be bent properly they have to be bent and hooked okay uh, joints in bars should be avoided very important joints in bars should be avoided try to avoid the uh, joints in your bars uh, and uh, try to make it a single bar and uh, you can break your bars at junctions right at joints you can at junctions you can break them but uh, we should try to avoid that avoid them and if you want to have uh, and if you want to have joints what can you use if you want to have joints you can either use overlapping right you can use overlapping you see you have you see you have seen this kind of overlaps usually in columns right in columns you might have seen this kind of overlaps so you have certain uh, uh, certain guidelines for uh, the length of overlap right length of your lapping so lapping length is this you can see this is your lapping length so that is usually equal to 60 times the diameter of your bar Okay, sixty times the diameter of your bar. So you can see this is lapping. Okay. So one more thing that you can do is uh, you can use this kind of uh, tool. What is this kind of? What is this that they have used over here? Can you name? Can you can you name this particular thing that they are using? What is this called as? Coupler. Coupler. Correct. Very good. So it is called as coupler. Right. Steel coupler. So they have your steel bar has threads, and uh, you can screw your Uh, two bars and you can join them using a coupler okay so lapping and coupling so that also specification you have to mention clearly then uh, the uh, during the laying and compaction right laying and compaction of your concrete uh, the bars should not be disturbed the layout of your bars should not be disturbed and overlapping should be and proper overlapping and so i have shown you overlapping length 60 times the diameter of your bar that has to be properly taken care of right sufficient uh, overlapping has to be done next is your centering and shattering right so mega centering and shattering uh, you can do it using a timber or you can do it using steel plates or whatever right so make sure that uh, the joints are leak proof that the uh, mortar does not leak out of your joint uh, the props and braces uh, and all those things should be provided properly all those things you can mention one more important thing is you have to what you have to do you have to make sure you have to make sure that you apply a coat of soap solution or a type of oil right you apply it on the form of before before you pour in your concrete because uh, you have to uh, remove that particular form of later no so because to prevent it from adhering right so you can use this soap solution or linseed oil 
whatever uh, foam work oil you can use and uh, you can apply it and then pour your concrete in okay so what uh, to prevent the adherence of concrete either, so that your removal of foam work is very easy okay then proportioning and all uh, is the same thing which you have studied in cement concrete you have to mention the uh, proportioning what is the method volume method or batch volume batching or way batching how you have to mix all those things you have to mention clearly then materials of concrete the same thing uh, coarse aggregate uh, you have to mention fine aggregate what is the percentage of fine aggregate what is the material quality then where it has to be procured from right uh, then you can mention the proportioning the size and uh, a few general things also you have to mention that like, uh, they should be clean they should be not any organic matter should not be present uh, any deleterious material should not be present all those things you have to mention and uh, regarding water it has to be clean drinking water should be mixed uh, should be used for mixing okay. general thing then mixing uh, you can write down regarding mixing you can use mechan mechanical mixer or you can do by hand for smaller operations right and it is usually decided by the engineer okay curing very important rcc work is to be cured right concrete has needs curing so you can use various methods for curing i have shown you in the previous class various methods that we can adopt for curing and usually we go for uh, 20, we can go for 21 days of curing 21 days of curing okay uh, regarding finishing when we want uh, uh, when we have rcc work we have to finish the surface right after uh, your rcc work is done you have to finish your uh, uh, rcc surface so finishing is to be done uh, using thick plaster right thick plaster you can make use of uh, this regarding plaster we will study now later we will study regarding plaster also and then we have to uh, surface it right the surface should not be more than 6 mm thick the plaster which you apply make sure that it is not more than 6 mm in thickness okay after that is done you can finish it with three coats of white wash three coats of white wash so whatever is important i have underlined okay whatever is important i want to line you can uh, make sure you uh, at least write down these points okay finished with three coats of white wash or color wash you can either do white wash or you can do color wash three coats okay three coats testing of concrete regular testing of concrete uh, whatever uh, testing is needed right fresh tests you can do fresh test on concrete then uh, also hardened test on concrete right cube test compressive test all those tests you have to specify clearly which all test need to be done and where they should be done what are the criterias and what are the expected results all those things you have to mention then regarding measurement as i have told you rcc work or concrete work is usually measured in cubic meters cubic meters but regarding steel okay steel has to be given in kgs or tons or quintals any of this you can follow depending upon the quantity if it is a small quantity you can give in kgs if it is a larger quantity you can give in tons or you can also give in quintals okay so this is regarding rcc i hope it is clear so it is regarding rcc next moving on to rmc what do you mean by rmc rmc what do you mean by rmc can you tell the full form of rmc ready mix concrete ready mix concrete very good ready mix concrete yes correct ready mix concrete rcc is nothing but ready mix concrete so this particular thing i have written on your uh, you can see on a screen it is is Four nine two six four nine two six. It is what it is the code for Redimix concrete. There is a code for Redimix concrete. If you go through that RS uh, IS four nine two six, everything regarding your specifications for RMC will be clear. Okay, everything regarding the specifications, what you have to mention, how it has to be done, all those things are mentioned in this particular code. So a few things I have uh, taken out from the code, where a few important things, and I have mentioned them in points over here. so the first point you can see here is what it is all the proportioning is to be carried out by mass by mass okay by mass meaning by weight okay by weight not by volume because that is uh, very important because uh, it is it is very accurate compared to volume batching okay except water and admixture except water and admixture which are to be measured by volume okay water and admixture are to be measured by volume so this is the, all these points are taken out from this particular code book okay okay so uh, the discharge uh, has to be done within 30 minutes of arrival of the site arrival on the site okay your concrete arrives in trucks right in transit mixers it arrives in agitator trucks or any other truck which uh, which you are going to use that particular concrete has to be discharged within 30 minutes okay make sure it is discharged all of all of the concrete or what we call as full load 
full load of concrete has to be discharged within 30 minutes of arrival on site next uh, concrete shall be transported in a truck mixer okay truck mixer usually which we adopt for transporting of our concrete uh, unless it is uh, agreed upon by both the parties okay unless it is agreed or uh, agreed that we do not use truck mixer or and any other type of uh, transportation vehicle usually we go for a truck mixer okay so the general requirement is that concrete shall be discharged from the truck mixer within two hours of the time of loading right uh, two hours from the time of loading is the maximum amount maximum limit and before two hours of loading we have to make sure that the full load is discharged right it is discharged two hours maximum so you can have an idea that where you can place your rmc rmc plant right and depending upon your site right depending upon the site of construction you can put an order from a particular rmc right whichever is nearby which can deliver you a concrete within two hours okay so uh, this is very important regarding a few more points regarding rmc so this is regarding testing regarding testing so we have to take uh, samples from your rmc right we have to take samples so the code says that we have to avoid the first third meter cube of concrete right the first third meter cube of concrete and the last meter cube of concrete we have to avoid sampling from this particular patch okay from the first third meter cube of concrete we have to avoid sampling and also from the last meter cube of concrete we have to avoid sampling okay next important thing next important thing is purchaser the purchasers are informed okay so you can uh, uh, order uh, sorry you have to sample okay you have to sample for every 50 meter cube or for every 50 patches you have to sample that is for testing you have to sample from every 50 meter cube or for every 50 patches okay or else uh, as uh, as as uh, specified by the engineer you can take samples so this is by the code that you have to take every sample for 50 meter cube next so storage regarding storage your cement should no, should be not stored for more than 3 months okay the expiry date of the cement is 3 months from the date of manufacturing okay so in case if you want to use this cement in case if you want to use this cement what you have to do you have to retest all the tests has to be redone and depending upon the results you have to either reject that particular cement or you can use that particular cement okay so 3 months is the limit make sure that is a very important then this is an image of an rmc plant rmc plant so can you tell me what what is this what is this cylindrical things which you are seeing here what are these what are these what are these cylindrical things which you are seeing on your screen what are they called as i hope you have studied rmc yes you have studied or no have you studied guys rmc previously have you studied yes or no yes, sir. of course sir. yes you have studied aryan you have studied yes sir yes no so uh, what are those particular cylindrical things which are there upright vertical things what are those called as can you name hoppers what sorry i didn't get you hoppers sir hoppers 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 yeah. they are called as others can you verify whether your friend is telling a correct answer or uh, whether it is called something different answer please answer quickly so that we will uh, move forward with uh, other things what are these particular thing what are these called as and then uh, what are these called as batch mixing plant batch the batch mixing plant is the whole thing right it is the sir plant. cement silio silio is right whatever i write you what i what i have told what a friend has told it is correct the whole thing is called as a mixing plant okay the whole thing is called as a rmc plant right and this particular thing here it is called as cement silo okay silos cement silos where you store your binder material where you store your binder material because it cannot be stored openly right if it will uh, if it is stored openly it will catch moisture and it will harden so we have to store it properly so use silos for a binding material it, it may be cement it may be ggbs it may be fly ash whatever right so these are called as bins okay aggregate bins or aggregate hoppers right wherein you have separate hoppers for different kind of aggregates you can see many bins are there and each bin has a different kind of aggregate okay different size of aggregate this particular room is called a control room wherein you control uh, what is the amount 
of uh, aggregate or the material which is going into our mixer right uh, depending upon the proportion which you have given okay so uh, this here is your mixer here is your mixer wherein all the material falls right all the material falls uh, on your conveyor belt it goes and it is uh, sent into the mixer wherein it is mixed okay so you can see over here, here also this is the mixer right here you have uh, aggregates which are coming in you have cement silos and the cement and water is given and it is mixed and it is and it is then uh, poured into a transit mixer okay so here you can see uh, this is the mixer from where and from here it is uh, transported or it is poured into your transit mixer so this is plan number 1 plan number 2 you have two sim plants working simultaneously okay so this height is kept such that a truck can come and stand below it and it uh, it can take in the discharge from the mixer okay so this is regarding rm 